In case anyone sees this before I cut the beginning off, which I sometimes don't get to do when I'm busy, my crew of one, Christelle, is off for Thanksgiving, so I have to set up the live feed and the regular cam. Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGange reporting for The Media Speaks here on Thanksgiving. There we go. Now, a lot of you are going to ask me uh, at some point, what are you thankful for? And I don't want to get into one of those shows that bore everyone to tears with their list of things they're thankful for. Um, that doesn't mean that I take my friends and family for granted. It means that you probably don't want to hear all of their names. Um, I will say that I'm thankful for how well my family's held together after my dad passed, hence the King Kong t-shirt. Um, we used to watch that back when uh, they used to show King Kong all the time on Thanksgiving. We used to wait for it every year. Um, on a bigger scale, I'm, I'm thankful for any radio artist that doesn't sound like Drake or Kesha. Um, I'm thankful for the fact that, you know, at least I work in a place that, you know, supplies a decent living because there have been times when I have been so unbelievably poor that I could scarcely afford to eat. So, uh, you know, those are things to be thankful for. But that is not why you tune in. Oh, let me get to this real quick. Um, before I get to why you haven't tuned in. Um, my friend Chastity showed me these. The engaged sociologist connecting the classroom to the community in this abysmal thing here, our social world. These, these ridiculous things make me want to scream. That's something I'm not thankful for. Uh, she wanted me to mention it on the show. I was going to give you quotes, but just go, go on the site and look at them. Basically, Islam is good. Jesus and all Christians are bad, and Mohammed can do no wrong. Um, every sin that any Christian's ever done will be mentioned, but the fact that the Islamists in some countries still do not allow their women to vote will not be mentioned. Uh, capitalism is evil, communism is good. I mean, you just burn this stupid thing, and it needed to be mentioned, and I, I promised her I would. One of the most intelligent ladies I work with, that's for you, Chastity. I still want you on this show. I really do, because you could be very insightful. Friends, I'm going to get right into the news. I've decided what I'm going to do is a show unlike any other Thanksgiving show on the Internet. I'm going to go ahead and give you all the things that I'm thankful for, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to touch on this other uh, gentleman's... Uh, Thanksgiving article because it mattered. This is from uh, the Tenth Amendment Center. Thankful but concerned for our future, it writes. He says they'll be the first to acknowledge that there is much to be thankful for about in America, about life in America, especially when compared to those beyond our borders whose daily lives are marked by war, hunger, and disease. Despite our fetching, grumbling, complaining, most Americans have it pretty good compared to the for fortunate for to those less fortunate the world over. And that that, that can't be overlooked. You, you you hear it, you say, yeah, that's true, Sam. Of course, go on. Pause there for a minute. Um, America has the ability to be so much better than it is, and that is what America's biggest problem is. Um, other nations, I cannot say that, other nations are as good as they can get in their hellholes. So, I mean, that, that should definitely be mentioned here. Um, we do live in a country where everyone can vote. Um, most of our Islamists and our Christians get along with each other. I mean, they're in this country. There's a lot to be thankful for. So, I mean, I don't want to gloss right over that. But uh, I like what he says here. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't point out that all of our so-called blessings will amount to a little more than gilding on the cage if we don't safeguard the freedoms of which this nation was founded, freedoms which have historically made this nation a sanctuary for the oppressed and persecuted, and if there is one freedom in particular in need of protecting right now, it is the Fourth Amendment, which has been on life support for quite some time. Uh, he says that he used to think that the First Amendment was more important, but it doesn't do any good to be able to speak your mind when cops are uh, rampaging through your house for no reason, which is the Fourth Amendment. 
Um, I'm not going to read everything on his paragraphs here. Again, go to the uh, TenthAmendmentCenter.com and read it. But I'm going to glance, uh, gloss over these. Uh, give them a list a little bit of time because they deserve it. Um, one of the greatest threats to our freedom is police shootings of unarmed citizens. Uh, no longer is it unusual to hear about incidents in which police shoot unarmed individuals first and ask questions later. This trend originates from a police preoccupation with ensuring their own safety at all costs, with tragic consequences for the innocent civilians unlucky enough to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. For example, consider the 16-year-old teenager who skipped school only to be shot by police after they mistook him for a fleeing burglar. Um, and that's, that's, that's a wonderful thing we do here in this country. Um, SWAT team raids. On an average day in America, at least 100 Americans have their homes raided by SWAT teams, although I've seen estimates he writes as high as 100, 300 a day, which are increasingly used to deal with routine police matters, angry dogs, domestic disputes, search warrants, etc. So yeah, you know, angry dogs are a good reason to bring a paramilitary unit into your home in the land of the free. Just because you're used to SWAT teams, just because they're acclimated, does not mean that they are usually right. If a man wants to use drugs, it is no business of anybody but the man of God. He's not hurting anybody else. He does not need a SWAT team at his door. Unfortunately, general incompetence, officers who misread the address on the warrant, collateral damage, you know, fatalities, property damage, etc., and botched raids, officers barge into the wrong house or even the wrong building, tend to go hand-in-hand hand with overuse of SWAT teams, with tragic consequences for the homeowner who mistakes a SWAT team raid for a home invasion, such as the 107-year-old Arkansas man after a shootout with a SWAT team, or the 19-year-old Seattle woman who accidentally got shot in the leg by police after she refused to show her hands. Maybe the SWAT team should not have been at her damn door! Uh, arresting Americans for altogether legal activities such as picking up their kids from school, holding Bible studies at home, and uh, selling goat cheese. Um, I'm going to get to that in a minute about that uh, picking up kids thing. Unfortunately, our government's tendency towards militarization and overcriminalization that means making everything illegal just so they can keep the prisons full, in which routine everyday behaviors become targets of regulation and prohibition, and have resulted in Americans getting arrested for making and selling unpasteurized goat cheese. Mad people. Cultivating certain types of orchids, feeding a whale, or holding Bible studies in their homes. These idiots taught them that. And picking their kids up from school. The last incident actually happened in Tennessee when Jim Howe, a father of two elementary school age kids, was arrested. And I'm going to get to that in a minute. Um, jailing Americans for profit. Basically, um, I'm, I'll read this, what the hell. At one time, the American penal system operated under the idea that dangerous criminals needed to be put under lock and key in order to protect society. Today, as states attempt to save money by outsourcing prisons to private corporations, imprisoning Americans in private prisons run by mega corporations has turned into a cash cow for big business with states agreeing to maintain 90% occupancy rates in privately run prisons for 20 years. So there's a quota of how many people they have contracted to put into prison. So it says, how do you keep the prisons full? By passing laws aimed at increasing the prison population, including the imposition of life sentences on people who commit minor crimes or nonviolent crimes such as siphoning gasoline. There's a quote, and there's a link for that. Transforming schools into quasi-prisons and teaching young people that they have no rights. Uh, that is absolutely true. That speaks for itself. Uh, turning community police into a standing army, extensions of the military. Again, SWAT teams, tanks, all these things that they're getting. Meanwhile, they're trying to take our arms away. Um, surveillance drones uh, taking to the skies domestically. Uh, there's going to be 30,000 drones in the sky. That's a violation of the God-given Fourth Amendment. TSA searches that accustom citizens to life in a police state. The, in other words, the TSA is moving out of the airports and onto the streets. Mark my words. Um, illegal invasive spying on Americans. We all know what Edward Snowden told us. The government is checking our cell phone records. They're checking every aspect of our freaking lives. So there are the greatest threats to our freedom this Thanksgiving. Now, as promised, on to everything that I am thankful for. 
where to begin, where to begin, where to begin. Um, I'm going to do this just because of the way the stories ran together, actually. We shall do it that way. I am thankful for the gentleman that refused, as I mentioned in the last article, to allow the school to tell him he couldn't pick up his own child at school. He pretty much gave them the one-finger salute and did it anyway. And I've said a million times, that is how we get the power back, is we just resist in mass. When it comes time to pay your traffic violation, don't. Just keep on driving. When they, when they ticket you for it, keep on driving. They only can put so many people in prison, even with this, because you can imprison more people, but you can only afford to lose so many doctors, lawyers, ditch diggers, cashiers, clerks, waiters, waitresses, dentists, in one city. Everyone refuses, and this BS stops real fast. Um, Paul Joseph Watson, uh, does government own your children, prison planet? Why is the state trying to make your children their property? Tennessee South Cumberland Elementary, in all its wisdom, decided to institute a policy which banned parents from collecting their children from school, forcing kids to walk out into moving traffic where parents were ordered to wait on their vehicles. Uh, this was going to get the Dunce Cap of the Month award, but so many people covered it that I didn't want to recover it by giving it the award. But it was going to win that, by the way. Uh, for those of you that don't know, look up my Dunce Cap of the Month award. Um... How many of you remember when you got out of school, you were not looking at traffic properly, and you know, the, the, even the uh, JP guards weren't always there immediately when the, all the doors of the school opened. So, uh, sending them into traffic is a good idea. Standing up against a patently ludicrous and dangerous policy, the father of two, Jim Howe, calmly asserted his right to take possession of his own children at the end of the school day and was arrested for doing so. I am thankful for people like him. Now, you want to get him out of jail? Everybody in that school district, you know what you need to do? You all need to walk into the building and pick up your kids because they can't arrest you all! Um, I'm thankful for this. Uh, very much I might add thankful for this. Let me see if I can, did I put a picture up for this? I hope I did. No, I bet you I did. And that's a shame because it's such a wonderful story. And I've said since day one, I don't know if the police realize it or not, but when they gave me a DUI, when I was perfectly sober, they started me on a war on this topic. And uh, it's one that I'm going to continue with here. DUI in Arizona, understanding your rights under the Fourth Amendment, world.einnews.com. This is one of the things I'm thankful for. I'm thankful for people that put out articles like this. If you can show that a traffic stop was a violation of your Fourth Amendment rights, you have a good possibility of getting the drunk driving charge against you ultimately dismissed. Why am I so big on this topic? Because you are not drunk or impaired at all if you have two drinks an hour. Can I be more damn plain? Um, and maybe some minor percentage of the population would be. It is an excuse to tag money out of people, and this thrills me that they're showing you how they're doing it. Being arrested and charged with driving while under the influence of alcohol in Maricopa County can be a frightening and intimidating experience. First, there is the whole process of being pulled over, even if you have been drinking, and even if you have, and he asked if you've been drinking, and then put through a number of tests. Second, there is that moment when you find yourself sitting in the back of the police cruiser in handcuffs. Third is hearing that you have been officially charged with a Dewey and is sitting in a holding cell waiting to post bail. Reasonable suspicion. However, once you post your bail, you should begin immediately planning your defense. And that means that you need to make sure your constitutional rights were not violated. One of those constitutional rights is the Fourth Amendment, which concerns search and seizure. Reasonable suspicion is the legal burden necessary to satisfy in order for an officer to legally stop you. Might I add, if you get pulled over, I wish I'd have known this, I learned it late. Tell them that you will take the breathalyzer test. I've said this on this show before, so hit subscribe. Um, when you do, you'll get all kinds of cool facts like this. Tell them that you will, in fact, take the test. However, you wish to take the test in the presence of an attorney. Because, see, that is perfectly legal. You, are, you don't have to subject yourself to any test from law enforcement without there being the presence of an attorney. All right. It's 3.30 in the morning. You're driving home from your job, and uh, you've had a drink or two. By the time they wake find and bring an attorney to you, you will not still be drunk at all. You will be no, virtually no alcohol in your system whatsoever. You definitely won't be over the legal limit. If you are in all that time, then you deserve the DUI. 
Um, reasonable suspicion as related to DUI includes speeding a taillight that is not working, which should not be legal. How do you know if your taillight went out? Uh, failed to stop at a sign or a light, driving in an erratic manner, and crossing over a center line into other lanes of traffic. Therefore, it is important to establish that there was, in fact, a good reason why the officer pulled you over. If you know that you were not in violation, then you will want to object to the arrest and question the officer's proof. Falsified arrests. A state trooper in Utah is facing a potential class action lawsuit over allegations that she violated people's rights and falsified her DUI arrests. No. According to the Huffington Post, awful paper, the trooper who was fired last year has been accused of arresting people for drunk driving when there was no alcohol in their system. I said paper, I meant sight. One of the people suing her claims he was stopped because he was wearing a Halloween costume. He was forced to take time off work and pay fees of $3,800, even though his breath, breath tests conducted showed no alcohol. Happens all the time. In Utah, troopers' vehicles are fitted with cameras, and uh, basically she deliberately malfunctioned her camera and took her mic off. Questioning the traffic stop. If you can show that the traffic stop was a violation of your Fourth Amendment rights, you have a good possibility of getting the drunk driving charge against you ultimately dismissed, or regardless of how intimidating the judicial system appears or frightened you are. You have the right to a quality DUI defense and, the object, and to object to anything that you disagree with. One of the first things that you should do is contact an experienced attorney who can examine your case and provide you with legal advice. Do not get a public defender, they or they were a public offender. Friends, I want to thank the Arcadia Grill this Thanksgiving Day because that is the advertiser on the correct view. And I lucked out. Not only did I get a restaurant uh, that I absolutely love. But it is so good to have one when you're advertising something, when you have something you can really believe in. Friends, their food is amazing. Go to the Arcadia Grill, especially if you're already in Ohio. Go. It's worth the drive if you're not near Camden. It's on Court and uh, Fourth. Go. It's delicious. And uh, if you like cocktails, you like beer, they have a alcohol wall that goes on forever. The staff is as nice as summer is hot or this freezing weather is cold if you are, in fact, in Ohio. Go to the Arcadia Grill. You will love the food. Uh, real quick, friends, I want to hop on to the next story. I think I have moved these out of order, so I want to make sure I get to it all. I'm very thankful for this. I sure am. I have a picture for this. You bet I do. Um, joy of joys on this one. Oh great, it doesn't want to enlarge. There it goes. If you'd like to donate to The Correct Views at uh, thecorrectviews at hotmail.com, I could buy a backing computer that doesn't suck. Friends, uh, CNET.com store owner installs surveillance cameras to spy on police. This is wonderful, wonderful news, and I'm so thankful. Surveillance is for your own good. Yeah, by having everything that you are doing being monitored, we can be sure that we, who have nothing to hide, will be safe. At least that's the logic, if you want to call it that. Many authorities offer us as they spy, pry, and vilify anyone who might feel suspicious. Great quote. What happens, though, when you suspect the authorities of behaving suspiciously? Is it all right to spy on them? God bless the writer of this story. Miami Gardens, Florida, convenience store owner Alex Selad decided to dry. He'd become vexed at what he saw as police harassment of his employees and even his customers. So he installed surveillance cameras with the specific intention of watching the detectives. He'd become frustrated, you see, about the possibly about the possibility of a not coincidental number of times that his employee, Earl Sampson, had been stopped and questioned by police officers. 258 times over a four-year period does seem a little like overkill. That seems like the understatement of the year. These included 100 searches and 56 jailings. As for convictions, well, they were only for marijuana possession. So now we've got uh, them harassing somebody for absolutely nothing. More Fourth Amendment rights being destroyed. Selah told the Miami Herald that it seemed odd that Samson had been arrested 62 times for trespassing when the vast majority of offenses were outside the very same quick stop. 
So they're harassing this man for being in front of the store that he works at and arrested him 62 times. That would be the quick stop where Samson worked. In all, Selah, this should have been a dunce cap. In all, Selah installed 15 surveillance cameras. Some might find a certain poetry in the fact that he felt the need for them when he says his store has never been robbed. He's afraid of the police, not the criminals. Uh, the videos make for numbing viewing. In one, a store employee takes out the trash, only to be arrested for trespassing. How did, how did this even hold up in court? He must have had a public defender. Others appear to show searches without warrants and police stopping customers without any obvious reason. Miami Gardens is neither an easy nor safe place, but the police reluctance to so, to so far comment on these videos and the Herald's reporting suggests that some questions might need to be answered. Clearly there is a history between Selah and the police. He filed an internal affairs report against some officers and he claims that they retaliated by being more aggressive. But he's owned the store for 17 years, and the fact that he has to install cameras in an attempt to prove that he fails his racial profiling, excessive aggression, and intimidation might be important of what is to come as technology becomes ever more involved in daily life. So I am thankful for him for sticking it to the law enforcement the exact same damn way that they stick it to us. God bless him. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the, uh, I got a picture of the devil. Yeah, there he is. Oh, I'm sorry, did I say devil? I meant Bill or Clinton. Well, they're interchangeable. Um, again, I don't give a damn about Monica Lewinsky, but I care about Chinagate. Um, I am thankful that even the devil, excuse me, Clinton, is... Even he is saying to leave those with existing health insurance alone. And uh, luckily, uh, some people in the House have passed, uh, the House Representative passed uh, this act so that Obama doesn't have to break the law to let you keep your insurance, which is what he was doing by not enforcing certain aspects of it. New American, keep your, the GOP's Keep Your Health Act to the left of Bill Clinton's stance. Oh, this is really good. Because it is going to, to help the, uh, the GOP to some degree. And I'm only happy about that for the sake of the Justin Amishes that are in there. I'm not most of the party. The House of Representatives passed the Keep Your Health Plan Act by a 261 to 157 vote. You've always got 157 morons in the crowd. On November the 15th, the legislation would allow millions of Americans whose health care plans were canceled under Obamacare to renew their plans for one year. But the Republican-backed bill is actually to the left of the position held by former Bill Clinton, who has called for a permanent repeal of this part of Obamacare. Dunderhead is right about something. Clinton, despite having supported Obama's Affordable Care Act, said in November, uh, during the, no, a November 12th interview, and that the federal government should not use minor changes in existing plans as an excuse to cancel existing health care plans. I personally believe even as it takes a change in the law, the president should honor the commitment to the federal government made by those people and let them keep what they've got. Oh, where's Monica? The House passed the bill, which included 39 Democrats who broke ranks, to vote for the GOP written bill would only delay implementation of the Obamacare regulations for pre-existing policies by one year. Four Republican congressmen voted against the House bill, saying the legislation did not go far enough in protecting people with existing insurance plans. Um, I am delighted. delighted. Read the rest of the article if you want. It goes back and forth. But it should be pointed out that even dunder pumpkin heads like Bill and his wife Hillary they both, even Hillary, didn't want to take your existing health care plan away. This was an Obama gift. Um, I mean, what I'm going to read a tad more of this. In order to head off a Republican-led rebellion against a massive cancellation of existing health care plans, President Obama has proposed an autocratic solution, changing the law by presidential fiat without getting approval from Congress. And that has a word to it. That word is illegal. Um, and don't talk to me about uh, people that have not enforced... Uh, you know, like some people said they're not going to enforce uh, pot laws anymore. Why are you in favor of it then? Well, because the, uh, the fact that there is a prohibition against the drugs is, in fact, an illegal law. There's a difference. Friends, go into Bud K. Something else I'm thankful for is Bud K. Because they are not only helping the media speaks when you go to the media speaks and click on Bud K in that order, but they also have done wonders 
for what you can do for $5 on a Christmas list. Now check this out. I'm going to go to three of them like I love to do. The $1.99 Emergency Survival Sleeping Blanket. Let me tell you, I'm in the land of ice and snow called Canton, Ohio. And if you break down and you don't have a blanket, you may just freeze to death. $1.99 Emergency Survival Sleeping Blanket. Someone you know with a crappy car at least will not freeze to death. The Mountain Man Boot Knife, it's $4.99. If you know somebody that collects knives, they will love you. And lastly, I can't get enough of this. This is just the bomb. Three LED Dynamo Hand Crank Flashlight, $2.99. No more flashlight not working because you don't have batteries in it. This hand cranked wonder doesn't need it. Uh, guys, last thing I'm going to get to, Infowars.com has this. Uh, it was actually posted first at LibertyBlitzkrieg.com. And the reason that I like this isn't because I think drugs are a good idea. I don't. I think that freedom is a better idea than drug prohibition. So let me go ahead and put this awesome thing up here as I close out my What Sam th is Thankful For Thanksgiving show here. Again, use this time to hit subscribe. It is a great help to me when you do. The authorities can shut down website after website, but the tide of new technology and the human spirit itself cannot and will not be overcome. This is the hard lesson that statists and collectivists will be learning the hard way in the years to come. As a decentralization and freedom stage a gigantic peaceful revolution. The revolution that is already in full swing and gaining tremendous momentum with each passing day. It took only a little over a month for Silk Road 2.0 to launch on the dark web, and there are already close to 500 illegal drug listings. As part of the new service, there is even a new security feature that allows users to use their PGP encryption key as an extra authentication measure. The login page, which you can see there, itself is even a parody of the Department of Justice seizure of the original site in early October and it shows what you see when you visit it. That is so awesome. I absolutely love that. More from Forbes. On Wednesday morning, Silk Road 2.0 came online promising a new and slightly improved version of the anonymous black market for drugs and other contraband that the Department of Justice will shut down uh, just over a month before. Like the old Silk Road, in which until now its closure served as the web's most popular bazaar for anonymous narcotics sales, the new site uses the anonymity tool TOR, T -O -R, and the cryptocurrency Bitcoin, which is impossible to buy, to protect the identity of its users. However, let me say, those of you that took my advice and bought Bitcoin when it was 250 I said sell it when it gets over a grand, it hit over a grand today, and the correct views just paid for your Christmas. I was so right on that. CNN was wrong. God bless him. Even Natural News and Mike Adams were wrong. Sam I be right. Ting! As of Wednesday morning, it already sported close to 500 drug listings ranging from marijuana to ecstasy to coke. It's even being administered by a new manager using the handle Dread Pirate Roberts. That's a great quote, too. The same pseudonym adapted by the previous owner and manager of Silkwood, allegedly the 29-year-old Ross Albrecht, arrested by the FBI in San Fran on October 2nd. Why am I so happy about this? Because every drug that some bonehead buys peacefully off this site is one drug that's not going to get somebody shot in the back alley where I live, that's why. The only significant visible change from the last Silk Road, spotted by the dark web focused site AllThingsVice.com, that first published the site's new URL is a new security feature that allowed users to use their PGP encryption keys as an extra authentication measure. It has a new login page parroting the seizure, and I just mentioned that. Uh, you can never kill the idea of Silk Road or read the, read the Twitter feed from the new Dread Pirate Roberts 20 minutes before the site's official launch. Uh, somebody in my comment line, uh, leave uh, a quote as, uh, let me know where that quote's from, Dread Pirate Roberts. If you get it right, I'll promote your favorite charity if you let me know what it is. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Make sure you go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Look at the work at Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself. Articles going up all the time. I got an article getting all kinds of traffic, the new drinking drug. Go check that out. And again, um, thank you uh, for watching the show. Hit share and subscribe. Those two things do me wonders. Hit Remix right beneath you, and uh, it's on the bottom right, uh, right under the video screen. 
and it will put this video on your channel. Good night, friends. Thank you for watching. God bless you, and happy Thanksgiving.